Okay, so we got this 2007 precedent here. There's a no crank situation. I've already diagnosed this one with the customer present. And it smells bad of gas and under this seat. I've had to shut the fuel off. So we got this filter here. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this. But this filter, the filter element itself is loose and there's dirt in here and it's getting past the fuel filter and getting to the pump and into the carburetor. Okay, so this is something that I've experienced on this stupid engine, this FE290 or 295 and the FE350. Okay, so here's our dipstick. You can see we have gasoline in the oil. The oil is actually not in bad shape, but it's all the way up to the middle of the dipstick here. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but it was up to about here. And it's only supposed to be to the fourth line here, or dot, circle, hole, whatever you want to call it. We have to uh, change the oil and filter. We have to change the fuel filter. And we have to remove the carburetor and clean it, reinstall it. And not to mention the another one that the battery is not securely fastened in. Lose the extension here. Oh, that even, not even tight. More times than I care to admit, I come across these spark plugs that are just not installed tight. Oh, spark plugs dry. Wonder if this is full of. Whoop. Oh yeah, she's full of gas. Okay, so I probably missed all that, but I just cranked the engine over. And there was nothing but liquid coming out of that thing. symptom of this is the carburetor. Basically the carburetor stuck open. Debris was getting past the float, or getting past the fil fuel filter. Okay. So we gotta pull the carburetor off still. We're gonna change the fuel filter. Add a fuel filter down here. gas on the hose there is draining into a pan. You can see here, hopefully you can see, this uh, filter is not, it's not actually attached. You can see where it's separated. I rotate it. And it's, see how it's all separated in there? It's not attached to the plastic. Okay. Definitely an old filter. I didn't sell him the filter. He had bought it from somewhere, somebody online somewhere. This filter on here
Although I'm going to be taking it off again anyway, but I just want to... I'm going to be disconnecting it from the carburetor side. I just want to get this installed on this side here. Hope you guys, I know you guys can't really see much in here, it's a little difficult as far as seeing exactly what I'm doing, but I'm just tightening these hose clamps down. It's not exactly easy access in here. There's the oil filter. I wonder if I can turn this without needing a wrench. Nope, I gotta put a wrench on it. This customer recently changed his oil on his own, but because contamination has made it into the oil from the gas, I'm gonna change it anyway. I've already told him that that's what I gotta do to do it right, and he was okay with that. We're gonna change it, just be do it right. Oops, looks like I'm going fishing for that drain plug. Okay, so we got the oil draining. I got my fancy oil filter wrench here, works in reverse. When you go in reverse, it bites down. And then I take my little oil container here that I cut in half. That's how I catch the dripping oil so I don't make a mess. Okay. 7356, it's the wrong filter. All right, so we got the filter out of the way. Got the little drain pan thing I made out of the way. And I'm just going to wipe off the face of this oil filter spin-on zone here just to kind of make sure it's clean. We're going to take our filter, oil filter, FIL0016 over on the site. You can see it's Red Hawk. It's my main primary supplier. Napa Gold, this is the wrong one. It should be 1356 if you're going to use a Napa filter. Not 7356, that's the wrong one. It's too tall. I mean, it's not gonna hurt it because it is a bigger filter, but you're gonna make the oil pump work harder. And don't forget to smear clean oil on the face of the thing. The O-ring, well, we've gotta make sure the old O-ring is off. And put it on, it doesn't have to be gahunga tight, but you don't want it to loosen up, so just give it a couple of turns. There we go, it's nice and firm. Why do you wear gloves? Never figured out. Okay, so it's clean. The O-ring's on there. Now this is one thing I will say I like about lifted carts. I don't need the jack in order to work on them. I do like the fact that I could just get right to work without having to mess with the jack. Kind of nice. I know I'm a little off kilter here for my angle, guys. I'm sorry, it's just the way it is. Okay, oil plug is in. New oil filter, spark plug, fuel filters. We're gonna fill it with oil. And then we're gonna take, take the carburetor off, clean it, put it back together, and we should be good to go. Let's get her filled with oil. 10 to be 30. I hate these things. There we go. Time 
sometimes these are very difficult to get into. Good job, club car. Okay. Now we're gonna run it with the fuel tank off. Because all they want to do is crank it over and get the fuel filter primed. Basically running off of whatever's in the carburetor, just to give the uh, oil a chance to fall. We're good. Now we gotta pull the carb off, clean it, put it back together, this will be done. All right, this is gonna be a hard angle to get, guys. I apologize now. Do my best. Plus, it's getting dark out, so we gotta. Basically, remove the air intake hose from the cart completely because it makes it much easier to get in here and work. And it's out of the way. You see how that opens it right up. Okay, here's my little tray of bits. 10 millimeter bolt and stud that are there are not there, so we don't need to worry about them. There, we can then lift this up and out of the way. Pull this out. This is an aftermarket cable because the original factory one has a like a clevis type of thing on it. See these newer carts are getting more and more crammed together like new cars where there's barely any room to work. Definitely not good to be doing that. Because in all reality, I mean, they have heat shields and stuff in these things. But the muffler is... Right next to the gas tank. So this is going to be very difficult to get this carburetor out because the um, lift kit that's installed not to make it difficult. This club car has this stupid plastic everywhere in here. And then what I'm going to do is unhook that hose it underneath the spark plug wire. The gloves already again. Straining into a pan. If you can see that, see all that debris right in there? Yep, that's part of our problem. Hey, you guys want to keep putting lip kits on these things, it's gonna make it harder for us mechanics to get a, get these out. It's a little gnarly. 
go wash it in the parts washer. All right, so we got the bowl. There's the bowl nut and washer. Washer's in good shape. I throw everything in the bowl. Take this, throw that in there, throw that in there. So here's the valve. Throw that in there. It's proving to be a bit of a pain. Okay, the screwdriver slotted in. There we go. You gotta be careful you don't round over the edges. It looks like somebody has already done that. Okay. Here's the main. See how dirty it is in there. Pretty much it. See, this doesn't come out. You can see it's only left, right, center, roughly. So now we're going to take this over to the parts washer and give it a good cleaning before we start spraying it with carburetor cleaner. This stuff here we're not going to clean with the parts washer. We're going to do that with carb cleaner. Here is body's all clean. I just cleaned the inside, the internals with some carburetor cleaner. Gum out carb cleaner. I'm not crazy about this brand. There's other brands that I think work better. Probably kill me faster too, but I've gone through every orifice here and cleaned them out. So now I'm going to go take this over to the parts washer and clean it. Alright, that's much better. Take, uh, purple or a blue rag here and wipe it off nice and clean now the float bowl or the bolt the float itself I typically just wipe these down with the rag I don't really like to use any carburetor cleaner on them unless there's some stuff that's stuck I just like to wipe them down just so clean wipe off because I don't want that rubber to get deteriorated from the carb cleaner itself. I've had the carburetor cleaner destroy those little rubbers on those. Okay. Put that in the float. This is clean. Just kind of dry it off a little bit here. Carburetor cleaner when it evaporates it does attract moisture. As it cools, so the float pin, pivot pin. Don't really need to do much with that. Nor do we have to do anything really with the bowl nut. We just have the main. To stick the tube in there like that, and then I'll put it over here and spray it. Hold it up to the light. Make sure I can see through all the holes. Rinse and repeat. I try to be as thorough as I can when I'm cleaning these things because I don't want to do it again. Carburetor cleaner seems to find its way into my gloves, even though there are no holes.
Okay, just snug. That's all you gotta do, just snug. This one I'll do a little tighter. Just snugger. <laughs> That's even a word. Okay. And then I like to put the drain towards the fuel line since the fuel line is basically right there. There's the washer. We go. Let's go put put it back in the cart. Let's see if we can put this in here without. Oh, I take the bolt off. I'm gonna break it. There's unnecessary freaking plastic in here. So make sure we don't lose any parts as we slide it in. Retrieved our spring. Dropped it again. Retrieved it again. Make sure it's not all gnarly and dirty. So our throttle body, throttle is reattached. Unhook this from that so I can bring it around. So I can put this back on there. And this. line back up. Install our shroud here. Our anti-tamper shroud. service mode. I'm just going to turn the fuel line on. 
fuel filter's filling. Secondary's filling. Carburetor's filling. I'm not gonna choke it. I'm gonna let it do its own thing here. That is a success. I'm going to shut the fuel line off because it's just a force of habit for me. Okay, this one's done. On to the next.